This is the Mistress Carrie Situation Report for June 13th, 2023. Your daily entertainment headlines, industry info, and everything rock. Just announced, Tool are headed back out on the road. They'll be in Boston at the TD Garden on Wednesday, November 15th. Tickets for the show are on sale now. Queens of the Stone Age are just a few days away from releasing their highly anticipated new album in Time's New Roman. It's going to be the band's first since 2017. During a recent interview with Revolver, lead singer Josh Homme revealed that some personal matters contributed to the delay in releasing the new music including being diagnosed with cancer in 2022. Saying, quote, I think this is the first time that I didn't want to make a record, but I was dealing with a lot of stuff in my personal life. We recorded a lot of stuff, and I think I was doing it because when I'm in trouble, this is what I do. This is where I go to get right. He continued to say, I never say it can't get any worse because I never say that. I wouldn't advise it. But I do say that it can get better. Cancer is just the cherry on the top of an interesting time period. I'm extremely thankful that I'll get through this and I'll look back at this as something that's fucked up, but that will have made me better. Rod Stewart has revealed that he wants to leave rock and roll behind after completing his 2023 touring commitments. In a recent interview with the BBC, he said he wants to pivot genres. Saying, quote, I'm actually shopping. I'm not retiring, but I want to move on. I had great success with the All-American Songbook, All-American Standards, and I've done a swing album with Jules Holland. It's going to come out next year. So I want to go in that direction. I just want to leave all the rock and roll stuff behind for a while, maybe. Black Veil Brides have released a cover of the Sisters of Mercy classic, Temple of Love, featuring Vili Valu, Vivi. Saying, quote, I first discovered Sisters of Mercy in my freshman year of high school. I had a poster of AFI from the Art of Drowning era, and Davey was wearing a Sisters of Mercy shirt, and so as was often the case back then. I went on a hunt to find the music that had inspired my favorite musicians. The very first song that I heard by Sisters of Mercy was the 92 version of Temple of Love, and I became obsessed with their entire catalog. Black Veil Brides and Vivi will embark on a co-headlining tour across North America in September and October. Over the weekend, Bring Me the Horizon used their download headline appearance to reveal that the second installment of their four-record Post-Human series will be titled Post-Human Next Gen. It's headed for a September 15 release. Singer Ollie Sykes has shared more of what fans can expect from the upcoming set, revealing the album's music direction as well as the conceptual inspiration for the collection. He revealed the second installment will be more emo and hardcore influenced, saying, quote, Linkin Park were the first band that I got into, but when I found Glassjaw, it was when I became obsessed with music and I knew I wanted to be a singer. So the album pays homage to that. Avenged Sevenfold are getting a lot of attention with their new album, Life is But a Dream. Bassist Johnny Christ admitted in a new interview with Full Metal Jackie that the album format may not be their approach for releasing new music going forward, saying, quote, we want this to be a full experience as an album. We don't know if we're going to do a full album again, to be honest. We might do singles and eventize those later in our career. Taylor Swift continuing to make history. The Eras Tour is expected to generate $4.6 billion dollars in consumer spending in the United States alone. A report by the research firm Question Pro via Fortune magazine found in addition to spending a gross total of $11 million to $12 million in ticket sales per concert. Swifties have spent more than an average of $1,300 to attend the tour, also factoring in travel accommodations and clothing. Recently, Chicago's average hotel occupancy rates hit 96.8%, during her three-night stint there, setting an all-time high record in the city. Other cities, including Las Vegas, Atlanta, and Boston, have reported a spike in hotel bookings and other tourism-related expenses. It's the end of an era for daytime television. Pat Sajak, the longtime host of The Wheel of Fortune, will retire next year. Yesterday, he announced he'll step away from the show following its upcoming season saying, quote, well, it's time has come. I've decided that our 41st season, which begins in September, will be my last. 
It's been a wonderful ride, and I'll have more to say in the coming months. For the first time since 99, Static X, Seven Dust, and Dope will be hitting the road together for a 21-date fall U.S. tour with openers Lines of Loyalty. Dubbed the Machine Killer Tour, the run features Static X and Seven Dust as co-headliners, each with a new album to promote. Static X just wrapped up the successful Rise of the Machine Tour and will release Project Regeneration Volume 2, the final album to feature recordings of the late Wayne Static coming up on November 3rd. Seven Dust are getting ready to drop their 14th studio album, Truth Killer, on July 28th. The tour begins October 6th in Houston and wraps up on November 1st in Los Angeles. And Shadows Fall are currently in pre-production for their first new material since 2012. The newly reunited metalcore outfit announced yesterday that they'll be entering the studio with producer Zeus, who's worked with Rob Zombie and Hatebreed, starting this Thursday to begin laying down some new material. And the Prodigy have announced their Army of the Ants UK tour is set to take place throughout November. The seven-show run of dates will see the band play arena-sized venues, including Manchester AO Arena and Birmingham's Utilita Arena. The band saying Army of the Ants is a calling to the Prodigy peoples, we're coming back for you the only way we know, full attack mode, double barrel. And actor Treat Williams passed away unexpectedly yesterday following a motorcycle accident at the age of 71. His rep said, quote, he was killed this afternoon while making a left or a right and a car cut him off. I'm just devastated. He was the nicest guy. He was so talented. And that's your sit rep. For more details on all of the stories, check the links in the show notes of this episode. And don't forget to follow and subscribe to the Mistress Carrie podcast. New full-length episodes come out every Wednesday. Episode 157 featuring Brad Gillis from Night Ranger is available now.